Welcome to Helene's Connection. <laughs> Hello guys, we are here again and with Dr. Bisa. On uh, today's video, we are going to be discussing cervical cancer. This video is going to be an awareness. If you have a sister, listen. You have a mother, listen. You have a, a wife, listen. And most of all, you have this precious daughter. Please, listen. Very well to cervical cancer. Cancer of the cervix is cancer affecting the cervix. Which part of the female reproductive organ is the cervix? The cervix is the junction between the vagina and the uterus. It's popularly known as the mouth of the uterus, which is our womb. So the principal cause of a cervical cancer is the human papilloma virus, popularly known as HPV. Cervix one, smoking. Two, multiple cellular partners. Three, early sex, that's early exposure to sex. Four, early childbirth or giving birth at age, age less than 17. Also, having children, more children, frequent pregnancy can also predispose one to cancer of the cervix. Some contraceptives, when taken for a long time, can also predispose someone to cervical cancer. You should be worried when you see, you notice any form of abnormal bleeding, either in between cycles, that's after you've seen your period and let's say after 4 days or 10 days, you start seeing it when your cycle is not yet complete, then you should worry. Also, bleeding after intercourse too should cause you to worry. Then bleeding after you have finished, reached menopause. For those in menopause at menopausal age, is also a cause to worry. Then abnormal vaginal discharge should also cause you to worry. Then pain after sex or during sex can also be a reason why you should be worried. One method of prevention on our list today is for you to go for tests. Like, prevention is better than cure. The earlier you know, the better for you. When you go to the hospital, it's expected that you will start from the scratch. So generally, the one they do for you when you go for cervical cancer screening, they do the VIA or the VLAN. The VIA is the visual inspection with acetic acid. Why the VLI is the visual inspection with glucose iodine. That one, they will just take it, they will open your stuff, smell it inside, then check the reaction, the color change. Then they cannot tell you if your service is good. From the color change, they can tell you, okay, your service is good. Come back next year. If the color did not change, well, they will tell you that your service is not good, okay? Go for pap smell. The pap smear is a test whereby they will just take a smear of you of the pap, your cervical pap. They will take it to the lab and then they will be able to check for some abnormal cells. It is from there they will now know that okay, this person may suffer from what cervical cancer. Then the final one, which is the gold standard for checking of cervical cancer. If you have money, you just go straight for coposcopy on the HPV not screens. In coposcopy, what they do, they take an instrument called a coposcope and they put it then view. Once they are able to view, they will not check if the cervix is normal or is not. So then they will not be able to collect a tissue and then take it to the lab for biopsy. It is this biopsy that is standard for checking if a particular tissue is malignant or is a normal what tissue just know that once you're sexually active you have to be going constantly at least every two two years so that it will not be by the time you're already infected friends it has progressed to a stage that they can no longer handle it in that stage you know that you, all you are waiting for is just to buy do you understand so prevention is better than cure if you go now that you are healthy Chances are that once they discover anything, you will get treated immediately. But if you go later when you are already sick in the hospital, then there is no purpose for this video. <laughs> so now that you are watching me, have you gone for your purpose, man? If you haven't, go for it. Yeah. The second one can prevent cervical cancer is by being vaccinated with HPV vaccine. And it's recommended for children 11 to 12 years who are not yet sexually active. 
They can even take it as early as nine years. They take it the first dose, see, uh, the first dose, then after six months, they take the second dose. So two doses is recommended. But however, for those 15 years and above, they are to take it in three doses or six months apart. If you are already sexually active, there are things you have to note. Number one, you have to be screened first to make sure that your HPV negative before you do take the vaccines. Then another thing you need to also take into cognizance when you are taking the vaccine that if you are 27 years and above, you can still take this vaccine up to 45 years, but it is less beneficial. It won't be as beneficial as it would have been for you if you took it when you were younger. So, if you have any question, drop it in the comment section. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, please click, click like button and don't forget to share to assist someone out there. Please, as you finish here, please go over to Dr. Besa's channel. She has a lot of interesting videos, a lot of interesting health talks that you can enjoy. So, see you in our next video. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Helen's Canal.